in challenges. And one of them he reached the last 16. In fact, he reached the last 16 in three challenges. That was last year. So he has played a little bit on the challenges, but this is a massive, huge standard to be able to match against Joao Salsa. And he's represented Bulgaria in the Davis Cup. Six wins and four losses, and away he goes. Well, I tell you, it, there may be a massive ranking difference, 340, because <laughs> Marlon and Joao Salsa 68, but it must be very nerve-wracking for the man in yellow, Joao Salsa, because he's expected to win comfortably, and nerves can get to you, and you never know what can happen in these matches. Palms remain down, it was pretty close. Nice now the difference good. really, even though it is, uh, there is a big class difference between the two, is why? They can all serve, they can all hit the ball, brown strokes, smash everything. It's the consistency. And at the high level, they're always consistent and they don't make mistakes. Someone round about ranked 340, could play wonderfully well for a short period of time, but to maintain that over two hours is unbelievably difficult. Great for Kuzmanov after such a long rally. Not only does he, does he feel he's in it, 30 all certainly, but to be able to match Salsa and the belief that he can match Salsa is absolutely excellent for the Bulgarian number two, 24 years of age. Born in a place called Plovdiv. I'm sure I've got that wrong in my accent. Plovdiv. So already a break chance. Kuzmanov, by the way, has played in the doubles here last year, won one match, got to the quarterfinals and then lost to Peja and Pavic. It's also a matter of uh, not only the consistency, but it's a matter of being able to concentrate for long periods of time. Even the massive players, the Federers, Nadal's, Chilich got to the final of Australian Open. You can't 100% be intense for two, three, in their oh. cases, four hours of it's a five setter. There are dips. So you've got to know when Pretty to, much, uh, how to much, control uh, that intensity. Hold here, what a great boost that will be for his confidence. 
Yeah, and he does it. Does it well. Match Salsa shot for shot. Okay. And the Bulgarians in the crowd. There's there's a few people. It's a 12,000 seater stadium, and I'd say there's quite a few hundred in, in in the stadium, which is good. Of course, everyone looking forward to Stan Wawrinka playing here, the three times Grand Slam champion coming back from injury played at Wimbledon last year then at uh, knee operations came back at the Australian Open won a match and then was well beaten by Tennis Sandgren of the United States he just wants to know where he was and he doesn't hope doesn't expect great things he just wants to play and it's just great that Stan Wawrinka such a big player in the world part of the the great top five and all those grand slams when every grand slam by Wimbledon is playing here it's quite an achievement for the tournament to get him replacing of course Grigor Dimitrov who very sadly had to withdraw he desperately wanted to play but he was just too injured to play there's no point in playing but not that if you're not going to give him your best disappointment obviously for the fans but hopefully he'll be I'm sure he'll he'll come back uh, next year he's certainly young enough Carl Edmund at the Australian okay. Open. That was a, a surprise in the last 16. Oh, that's a shame. That was a shame. It should have been more positive rather than Dimitrov, just going back to him, of course, won the ATP Tour Finals at the end of last year, which was wonderful for Bulgarian tennis and for all these players, including Kuzmanov. It must be such an inspiration that someone that you know has done so well. It must rub off a little bit on these players. Salsa then, 40 love. Very quick is uh, Kuzmanov, and so is Salsa. Yeah, Just a bit too strong, holding it to love. One game on. Well, my first impressions of Dimitra was one of that's, of course, Salsa. My first impressions are very quick, very light on his feet, got some wonderful movement. He, look, he just looks good. See how good he is. He's been around quite a long time. 24 and still playing on the Futures Tour. He should be moving up to the Challengers, but players develop at different ages. But now, sir, please, sir. Fifteen, third, sir. Well, it does look very smart. Both look smart.
beautiful shot. Salsa needs to be in a little bit quicker than that. It was a good shot from Salsa too. Because one of well out of reach from the court, but he picks it up well. And that was a really good shot. Guzman have maintained the intensity that's required at this level. is continually attacking the Kuzmanov backhand so they must have him and his team must have done some research <laughs> of Barcelona to South his coaches Portugal's Federico Marquez and also Francisco Roig so they must have done quite a bit of research on which is the weak link for Kuzmanov and here's a break chance for Salsa. And he's found a little weakness there, and it's Sousa with the early break, leading by two games to one. And if you're just uh, rejoining us, welcome. Dave Lady here in Sofia, in Bulgaria, for the Sofia Open. It's Raul Sousa from Portugal, world ranked 68. 2 1 up with the break against the Bulgarian wildcard, Dimitar Kuzmanov. He's just asked Carlos Bernardes, the Brazilian umpire. Can I borrow your scissors, please? I just need to cut a little bit of my hair. Bernard is obliged. Portuguese Davis Cup player against the Bulgarian Davis Cup player, but there is a massive difference between the two. Left. Manov. No, Looking for a, a break back Long here. Point. Just overhitting just a little bit. He wants to impress his opponent that I'm just too big and too strong and too powerful as he delivered that serve, which was just 161 kilometers per hour, but it was beautifully angled. Two break-back chances for Kuzmanov. He's only ever played on the main tour here in Sofia. Because of wild cards, this is the third time because the tournament's been going three years. Lost both in the first round matches the last two years. Mr. Kuzmanov has chosen the ball at the right baseline. The ball has gone out. We won't be used to uh, challenging Kuzmanov because he plays in the Futures Tour. We don't have that sort of equipment. Still waiting for Hawkeye to deliver. Oh, 
Two sets. Uh, two sets. Thirty forty. Still break point. By this standard, of two course. Times just trying to float the ball back. Perfect. Save two break points. A third. Well, it might be anyway. Back to juice. Wishful thinking from the Bulgarian point of view. But Moscow. Now it's a third. So Salsa holds for 3-1, tested a little. Now here's the difference, just in prize money alone. Dmitry Kuzmanov has won 97,000 US dollars in his career. 97,000. Salsa has won 4.4 million dollars 776,000 last year and already 79,000 this year but what we've seen so far is not that even though Chris Marlow is trailing I think he's doing rather well that's not patronizing I really think he's doing well he's got mistakes out of his opponents playing very positive tennis top junior in Europe, well, that was eight years ago, never quite got on, he won, has won 12 Please Futures titles in 22 finals, and five Futures doubles titles in 10 finals, so it shows you he's good on that, at that level. His highest ranking, 281, for Schwal Salsa, 28. Quite cool from the line judge. Now that's another man I got into the lift with, and I think he is a Bulgarian television commentator. He's probably very, very famous in Bulgaria. But we had a nice conversation. We compared our accreditation passes, which both says commentator. And then we both laughed. So no, no, Kuzmanov no. deservedly no, no, no. holds his serve. He's a breakdown, but he's playing well. On a tennis court at the moment, he leads 3 2 with the break. Now, 
Souser's probably his best ever performance. It's there he is. Was in a 1,000 Masters event in 2016. He's played 35 of them, and he got to the quarterfinals in Madrid. I think that was tremendous in Grand Slams. Three times in the last 32. Actually, twice in the last 32, which is, means he's won twice in each uh, year he's done it. <laughs> Round two, four times, the French Open. <laughs> last 32 in 2016 at Wimbledon. And twice the last 32 at the US Open. So he's been there and thereabouts. Not at the latter stages, but he's been there midweek, first week, like a couple of times. 28 Grand Slams, including qualifiers he's played. His opponent has only ever played on the tour three times, all here in Sofia. No, he was in. I thought it was a good shot from my box miles above the arena. Wonderful view. And this is going to be for 4 2. And he does it with a. A 193 kilometers per hour ace. It needs 4 2. Now it's going to be in blue with the blue hat with a white circle. Uzmanov, who started at six years of age, introduced by his mum, Dora Rangelova, who was the f a former Bulgarian Federation Cup player and is now the current captain of the Bulgarian Federation Cup women's team. <laughs> his current coach is Stefan Rangelov, who gave him his first racket and started to train him. has been training him ever since. And he comes obviously from a bright his DNA must be bright because his dad Savko Kuzmanov is an aeronautical engineer he's forced another error and Kuzmanov you just actually wonder why he hasn't been a little bit higher he been the Bulgarian champion in different age groups. Good junior as well. Quite and to make some sort of a breakthrough into the, maybe say the top 200 where you can play on the Challenger Tour at 340. You've really got to struggle to get on the Challenger Tour. The tour below the ATP main tour, 250s, then 500s, then thousands, and then grand slams. You can 
see why Salsa is attacking that backhand because Manov favours the slice a lot more than the backhand topspin. And if you're slicing, you're just defending, so you keep attacking. You've got to have a backhand topspin to surprise. I was just thinking of Ivo Kolovic with his massive serve. He slices on the backhand. Then he surprises everybody, that six foot what, 11 giant from Croatia. Surprises many players. He's getting on there, must be 38, 39, 37 at least. He comes with the backhand topspin, which surprises lots of players. This one, I can think I can put that one away. The only problem he had, Kuzmanov, was not to touch the, the net. He was so close to the net. He's doing really well here. He's holding his opponent just to one break. Look how close it is to the net. You just see the follow through? See, he didn't follow through because he would have hit the net. So. Those of you who don't play tennis, those of you who do, obviously, know what I'm talking about. Oh, that's a little unfortunate. There's the focus slipping a little bit. Salsa, the seventh seed here. Still drawing the errors from Salsa. Why not? Switching the attack, massive attack to the backhand, pins his man almost in the backhand corner and then switches to the forehand. And of course Kuzmanov, off balance, did really well just to get his racket on the ball but much too far away. Sounds pressing for this second break which would surely clinch him the opening set. Isn't it? Just too good. Also, because Manov lacks, he's not, a, he's six foot, but he lacks weight in his shots. Not saying that Sals has got big shots. He seems a heavier guy. I would have thought maybe because Manov needs to put on a bit of bulk, but he's superbly fit. Draws another error. Doing really well.
Deus. He is battling hard to pick up his games. And I think that's well appreciated here by the Bulgarian fans. And he does, he holds. There's only one break in it. You just don't know. 4 3 to Salsa. Who's hanging in? Just the one break achieved in the third game. And uh, Salsa with new balls. Highly experienced player. Nicknamed Conquistador, Portuguese for Conqueror, which you knew anyway. Comes from a smart family. Dad Armando is a judge, his mum Adelaide is a banker, and his brother Luis is a student. Started at seven with his dad at the local club, as one does. Then he moved on to Barcelona at the age of 15 to try and become a pro tennis player oh. and he succeeded. Oh, oh this in. Put enough top spin on the ball. Hasn't really been tested too much on his serve. Had a few scrapes, but by and large, his concentration has been good. Oh. Salsa. Again, Takes the freebies. Five three. Guzmano serving to save this opening set. It's lasted 37 minutes. Well, this is a match, really, where South has been no, the no, one no. who's been aggressive, positive, on the attack all the time. And now we've seen pretty much a set of the Bulgarian. He's a defensive player without any real major weapons to counter-attack when the time comes.
Very pleasant to watch Kuzmanov and his defence has reaped some reward. Whether it can go on to break back in this set, indeed he's got a hold here, hasn't he, to keep in the set. Just the lack of weaponry. And you can't see, see Salsa making four massive errors in one game. Sure, one, two, at a push three, but you can't see it really happening. There's a mistake. He has picked up quite a few points, just kept it going. It's just Water. if only it had some weapon just to pull off a free point on a big serve or some one big forehand just to win a point in each game or the critical games. But he's got a chance to pull it back to 5 4. Oh. So although Kuzmanov won that game, there was a ball, high ball returned. Not that deep, but he could not put it away, and you do need a big weapon if you're going to, say, break the top 100, and I don't really see that Kuzmanov has got that. Still got a chance to develop it, though, but it's Salsa. 5-4, one break will serve for the opening set. Jarrell Salsa serving for this opening set. Nice easy point to start with. He really looks totally concentrated to do a quick job. But he's had a good test so far in this first set. Sounds is appealing. Second well, even Kuzmanov thought it was in because he walked to the other side. Second serve. One ninety-three kilometers per hour serve. Two set points for Portugal's finest. Save one.
Kuzmanov, who is now hitting the ball on the backhand, having sliced quite a lot to begin mm. with, reaping some reward. In fact, quite a lot of reward. He saved two set points. My word, that would be quite something if he can just break Salsa here. a break chance to astonishingly level this match at five all. He's broken. Eat my words. Well done, Kuzmanov. Okay. From nowhere. Okay. It really did look like Salsa was going to coast along, take the first set, and then possibly crush him in the second. But it wasn't to be. Salsa had two set points, missed both, two errors, and the match is poised at five games all. World number 340 playing the world number 68. And Kuzmanov is in front. And if you take it to perhaps say a tiebreaker, well, it's. I wouldn't say it was a lottery, but you, you do have a, quite a chance. Oh dear, that's not what is required. Just these little one or two points make all the difference. Back. Just the one break in it. Perseverance has paid maximum dividends and all credit to the Bulgarian. Played his game pretty much to the maximum of what he can do. And he has snatched, and deservedly so, a 6-5 lead, guaranteeing himself at least a tiebreak. Well, Jao Salsa, just a few minutes ago, had two set points. Now he's serving to save the opening set.
brilliantly played by Salsa. Great gets from Kuzmanov. This persistent and consistent <laughs> attack on the backhand. <laughs> and then switching to the forehand. Great play. So these points to take it into a tie break. into a tie-break. Just looking at the total points won here. Salsa has won. Just three points more than his opponent. Well, that mini break right at the start quickly extinguished. Carlos Bernardes has called a halt. It was called out. I think the crowd called out. Carlos Bernardes said Salsa had appealed, but the crowd called out as well. And the line judge, I think, called out. We're just waiting. And it was an excellent call by the line judge and the crowd. Oh. Which now all means, remarkably, Kuzmanov is 2-1 up with the mini-break. All three points gone against the serve.
another error from Salsa. What a surprise. Three, one, goes Mano. Ace number two for Kuzmanov, four to Salsa. And he's underlined that mini break by holding his serves. First to seven, of course, to clear. Don't know if that's the family in the background, but my goodness, he's playing well. another mistake from Salsa. 5-1 up. Two mini breaks up. This was after he saved two set points on the Salsa serve. And Salsa was serving up 5-4. And Guzmanov has shown that he can match his opponent shot for shot. Well, I didn't think this was going to happen, that's for sure. And the shock of losing those two set points has given Kuzmanov the belief. I don't think Sals has dropped his standard. He's sure he's been missed a few shots, but his standard's still quite good. It's Kuzmanov who's been so solid. Just a point in it, 43 to 42. Salsa with one more point, even though he's 5-1 down in the tie break. Oh. Just out. Carlos calls it, the line judge calls it. Five, two. It's my now, it's all on the Kuzmanov serve. Not the biggest serve. He's produced a couple of aces. One would be a delight for him here. So on these two serves, he could win a set. That was uh, rather Five, delightful three, to the eye. An aggressive attacking shot. Opens up the court and a nice punched volley. So one of those mini breaks has gone. But he's still got this one. And if he can win this point, he'll have three set points. And he does. He's got three set Seven. points, two on the Salsa serve, Six. and three. then, if required, on his serve. Oh. One saved, two left. The clock has gone past the hour. 61 minutes for this opening set that's had a major surprise. Appeal from Guzmanov. Quite right, he's got three challenges anyway, so why not? You never know. 
Oh, it's in. Replay the point. Wait a minute. Why aren't you giving me the point? Maybe. But I don't think you can really get the point. Bernardes has seen it all before. So Sousa will serve with a first serve. He's still two set points Thank down. No call. No call. Cool. That looks out. However, if if it has landed, it will be the set to Kuzmanov. Here we go. Oh, it's well out, isn't it? That's a bad, bad call. However, Kuzmanov, having lost two set points on the Salsa serve, doesn't give a lot of confidence for both players. They both had line judge rulings overall, but Kuzmanov still got a set point on his serve. Arguably the biggest point he's ever played in his career. I'd like to build it up. And he's over hit it. Three set points saved. They go to the chair. Just he hasn't got the big shot to finish it off, has he? It wasn't quite there and it sailed out. It's like a dart missing the, the dart board. Now, what will that do? To affect his confidence. How much confidence will it give Salsa? He's still got to face a Kuzmanov serve. Slightly in a better position, Salsa, than he was a few minutes ago. Salsa stand in, he's not, he's standing behind the baseline, he'll jump in though, just a little. I think it's landed, I think it has landed, it has landed, and poor Kuzmanov let it go, and it landed smack on the line. And now Salsa, having saved four set points, has now got a set point on his serve at 7-6. Real shame for Kuzmanov, but he has remained cool. He's got it. Eight points to six. Well, say four set points. A real shame for Kuzmanov and huge relief for Salsa. And after an hour and six minutes, he's a set up. Kuzmanov serve and Kuzmanov could have had another set point, but he let a floating shot from Salsa. He thought it was sailing out, but it landed absolutely smack on the line. And with it, pretty much went the set. Second set are now underway. Dave Luddy here in the commentary box. Watching a very, very good effort from Kuzmanov, who's ranked, those of you just joining us, 340 in the world. His opponent is ranked 68. 
Sounds a very experienced player. Played in 28 Grand Slams. Won a couple of titles in nine finals. His opponent playing only his third ATP Tour event. The other two, last two years here as a wild card here in Sofia. He's really a futures player. He's a delightful player to watch. Very light on his feet. Very fit. Very consistent, but no weapon. And he's given Salsa quite a few problems, but you feel now maybe the concentration, the effort to get so close to winning a set as the intensity has perhaps momentarily elapsed. Four points in a row for Salsa. To whether Kuzmanov can deliver what he delivered in the first set, really testing Salsa, forcing the errors in some long rallies. That's now debatable. But I said that in the first set and proved absolutely wrong. There was only the one break in the whole set on either side. So Salsa now with the big advantage, not just in games and sets, but confidence-wise, he's you'd feel that in himself he's thinking, just need to be nice and steady here, to go for my shots, which I can do, and Kuzmanov might start making quite a few errors. That's what it's Salsa's thinking is. Kuzmanov, who's serving, will be thinking. Let me just get back to what I was doing in the first set. Concentrate, keep it going. And hopefully draw those errors out of Salsa. Like that one. That was a nice serve straight into the body. Okay. Really got Salsa all tangled. He's trying to hit through him, but he's not succeeding. Mm. He looks to his corner, which is just down in front of me. His two coaches, Frederico Marquez and Francisco Ruiz. All of them from training Barcelona. So that's a true. Kuzmanov still is still there, not going anywhere. Yeah. That was a really nice, accurate one serve, on. and it's one-one. Both of them serving to love. Oh yeah. One goal. Pulled out.
He's trying a nice little dig there. Failed. Two, two, seven, two, seven. Four, two, two. Just tend to think that South is rushing when he doesn't really need to. But Guzmano's a bit of a sponge in the nicest sense of the word. He's getting everything back, he's absorbing everything. Good sponge. So that hasn't got really a big forehand at all. It's still like a little whipped top spin. Doesn't work. And Sousa leads by two games to one and by a set to love. And now he's getting frustrated. I like the idea, I think. I think Sals is doing the right thing, but he his opponent is much quicker than probably he thinks. And getting confident. Increasing that confidence and matching his opponent. See if we can get into another good position. A lot of the Bulgarian players including, I can see a couple of them, the qualifiers, Alexander, or the non-qualifiers, Alexander Latsov and so Alexander Lazarov, both took their opponents to three sets in the qualifying yesterday, both watching and giving their support to the number two Bulgarian, number one of course is Grigor Dimitrov. Mr. Kuzmatov, he's done the call, the left part of the ball is called out. This at Rabi, third job. Mr. Kuzmanov has two challenges here. Well, this is hard for Salsa. He's been aggressive and positive, but this man is absorbing everything. Is the sponge in the best way possible. He's absorbing everything and he's still there. He's hanging around. He must be ruined. Can you imagine if he'd taken that first set? The player would have had on Sousa's mind. Sousa now knows he's got that set in his pocket and can open up a little bit as he's trying. See, both of them haven't really got massive weaponry that the, the big guns have. I mean, you've got, say you've got Stan Wawrinka, top seed here, fantastic. That big, huge backhand of his, big forehand, that's hopefully that he's healthy and fit. But when he's playing well and he's healthy, they've got weaponry, Murray, Federer, Djokovic, these are the creme de la creme, but even players 
was my knock. You know, so you've got Jules Muller playing here. What weaponry he's got. So the other players in the event, they've got big weaponry, say Vavrinka, Muller, Robin Haaser, who can really hit the ball, but is not always that consistent. But those three can really hit the ball. Certainly Muller. Juice. So here's Souser's chance. Only been two breaks in the match, both in the first set, decided by a tiebreaker. Eight points to six it was to Souser, having saved those four set points. Here's a break chance for Souser. In. And he's got it, he's got the break. And the crowd go a little quiet. So that's the second break point converted from five attempts by Salsa. And you'd think now he's in charge. That's at Same score line as the first set. He was leading 3-1. And they went all the way through to 5-4. South served and missed two set points. During the tie break. Here come those mistakes again. Keeping Kuzmanov. <laughs> Must be thinking Anna's still got a chance here. Well, you just feel that Sousa now has got this match, fifth ace. And everyone's gone quiet in the in the hall. Because man have to serve, break down. Go 
ีเซอร์ครับโจทย์Some solid play from Kuzmanov, just about keeping his hopes alive. Just hold on here, just the one breakdown. Out. Good luck, sir. Good luck. Well, he's kept Joao Sousa so far on court for the equivalent of a soccer match. Almost 88 minutes without extra time, and he's certainly going to go past the 90-minute mark, plus a bit of extra time at the minimum. Turning out to be much tougher than I'm sure Salsa thought. That's a nice shot, having opened up the court. But you've got to give a lot of credit to Salsa. He's, I think he's been surprised. He's had a tactic, continue attacking that backhand. But he's maintained his focus, and it was a great comeback from four set points down in that first set tiebreaker. Rally and Kuzmanov again, like a brick wall, gets everything back. Mm. I mean, Salsa's getting was going for everything he could, switch the attack, and Kuzmanov is still there. Just a shame he hasn't got a weapon of his own, but my word is he played well. Above and I would think beyond expectations against an opponent who's ranked so much ahead of him. 272 places above him in the world rankings. And they play in different levels. Massive difference between the two. It's got to go out. Well, it's now 90 minutes. It's kept Salsa on court. Oh! 
Mm. Yeah, late call. That was right down below me. I I was always going to put my hand out to say that's out. <coughs> but the line judge just beat me to it. Sousa was <laughs> putting Gizmanov almost like a pendulum one side, then the other side, then left and right, and he still can't break through. Just a little extra pace there from Sousa. Pulls it back to Juice. He wants this match over as fast as possible. Salsa then, a chance for 5-1 and serve for the match. And he's got it. And the winner of this, and you think it's going to be Salsa leading by a set and 5-1, will play the winner of the match between Maximilian Matra of Germany and Malik Jaziri. And that match will take place, I believe, on Wednesday, which means Salsa will be back to play on Thursday if Salsa as you would expect, wins this match. But he's been given a very tough time. Salsa, the seventh seed. We've already lost the eighth seed, the Russian. Evgeny Donskoy, beaten by Lukas Lachko today. <laughs> and so, after 95 minutes, Joao Sousa, having been really tested, by the Bulgarian wildcard Dimitar Kuzmanov has three match points. And there it is. 
Joao Salsa severely tested in the first set. One on his third set point, that first set 7-6. Well, eight points to six in the tie break. Very sporting handshake. And finally came through by six games to one, winning it very comfortably indeed. Quality shone through and Kuzmanov could not maintain that consistency that he had in that first set. Victory then for Salsa. We'll play either Matra or Jaziri on Thursday in the last 16. 